It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Wednesday, May 18th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is looking forward to answering a ton of your questions. Questions are good. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello once again. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow Locked On Flyers on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all the Flyers news and our episodes. You can also email us at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a signing for the Flyers. So that's good news. There's some coaching mm-hmm. news around the NHL that could affect the Flyers. And we have your mailbag. So lots of good stuff on today's episode. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Russ, I was feeling super sad because we didn't have an episode yesterday. Uh, with some technical problems. We apologize for that, but we had such good things and I'm sorry everybody missed it. However, it's a little fortuitous because we did actually, on that missing episode, never to be heard, uh, talk about Adam Ginning, Mm -hmm. who there was speculation that he may come over and sign with the Flyers. Lo and behold, now we have the news that he did. Yeah, I'm very happy about this because... Well, I saw it come up on Elite Prospects, and I work for them, so they're they're basically their transaction logs really good. Just a tip out there for everybody, if you ever want to know, sometimes the insiders miss out on this, but Elite Prospects never does because they get they get the information on the paperwork. Um, you know, look, terrific defensive and defense defensive defenseman skates well. I've spoken to people about him this year. I've seen him play. I've seen him play internationally. I really like him. Um, I think he's still a year away. I think you want him in a full AHL season. But in a year, you're going to have a decision to make. Like, do you want two guys that play like that, like him and Ristolainen? Maybe. Maybe you do. Or are you going to start looking at Ristolainen in in year two and say, hmm, um, do we need him anymore at this salary because now we have Yinning? Like, that's something that could come up in the near future because they're very similar that way. Ristolainen has more offensive ability. Don't get me wrong. But – they're not, they're not using them in that role. So, Yeah, that's what I think is important to talk about here with Adam Ginning because I think there's a lot of tendency to just look at his stats and obviously he doesn't get a ton of points because he is that defensive defenseman. Right. And he's pretty good at that. I, I agree with you that he needs at least a year of seasoning in mm-hmm. the AHL, but I do think it's important to have competition for Rasmus Ristolainen so that, you know, he has more incentive to maybe up his offensive game in a lot of ways, right? So that yeah. if he knows that there's somebody coming up behind him that could take his job away, I think that's better for the Flyers overall. And then we get another solid defensive defenseman to boot who could be a bottom pairing guy. He could be a PK guy. He could be a special situations guy that could contribute to the Flyers moving forward. And so I want to give this guy all the chances in the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what he's used to doing over there. He has some size, but he also has snarl and attitude. And those are things that, you know, a lot of times are not taught and usually can't be learned. Usually these are things that are innate. And so these are things that why they drafted him in the first place. He was sort of forgotten because he's been over in Sweden all this time, but he's been doing well all these years. I've been checking in on him because – I haven't forgotten, and it's one of those things where it's, it, you know, I try and stay on top of all of it. Even though if I'm not seeing a player that year, I try and at least speak to somebody that has been seeing them. And so I try and do that all the time. And I was able to do that with Yenning, and that's why I feel confident about it. Absolutely. All right, want to get to the NHL coaching carousel. Lots of updates there, especially because we had some additional locker cleanout season-ending press conferences from a couple of the eliminated teams. 
And so we got some more information in the last day or so to add to the pile. We did learn via Elliot Friedman that Barry Trotz is interviewing in Winnipeg. Not Interviewed. Hold on. Interviewed. He's a little late on this. My in <laughs> Winnipeg insider told me the other night that they were out and about and talking. And so this is, see, this is what I worry about with the Flyers, right? And I'm not trying to get on Elliot because he only gets the information that he gets, right? Right. This is right. just because he was seen, right? Barry Trotz was seen in Winnipeg. But my point is. I mean, how did he do that if there's no airport? There's a way. They don't. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, here's the thing. Was he seen in Winnipeg or was he seen somewhere else? I don't actually know the answer to that, but I know he was seen. So anyhow, point being, this is where you have to worry about the Flyers. We don't have any information on anything, anybody, any sighting, any coach in the city. You know, um, John Clark's not been at the airport like he is for every Eagles player trying to see if somebody's flying in to to interview for the flyers. Cause he probably won't bother, but you know what I'm saying? There is yeah. zero out there. Zero. Well, we do know one place that potential head coaches won't go. And that's the New York Islanders. They hired sure. Lane Lambert, who was an assistant coach there. That was kind of rumored before they made the hire and got to love Lou Lamarillo, right? Lou has closed ranks to the point where he won't tell you if he interviewed anybody. He won't tell you if anybody was interested in him. And it really doesn't matter what you think because he knows what he's doing. That's what he basically said for part of his press conference yesterday, which was weird. And he did have to backtrack the new voice thing because he said they needed a new voice. But this right. isn't a new voice because he's no. been there the whole time. <laughs> So he, he realized he had to walk that back a little bit. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing anymore, honestly. I mean, I mean honestly, we have to look at that like, Lou touch, right? Yeah, I mean, this is where we have to say, okay, we understand Lou has won championships and has been very good in this league. He did a good thing bringing over Trots. He did a good thing bringing over Mitch Korn. Some things broke right. They weren't even going to make it in the bubble if there wasn't a bubble, right? I mean, things broke mm -hmm. right for them. And, and then the next year, they, they managed to, to run it up again. So there was some success there. But Lou in Toronto, there was zero success. The same success they're having now or lack of it. And right now, I mean, other than that little blip with the Islanders, again, he's not the same guy he was with the Devils. And, you know, Islander fans are kind of like uh, on the edge about this, and I don't blame them. I don't either. I think it'll be an interesting year for them next season. Uh, have to see what they do personnel wise in the off season right. as well. Another job and coach that will not be available is Sheldon Keith with the Toronto Maple Leafs with Brendan Shanahan saying essentially that him and Kyle Dubas are going to be back next season with the Leafs and you know, I there you know there was word that he could potentially fire them both, but apparently not. Yeah, honestly, I was fifty fifty on whether they should do that, but it would be based on answers that I would have heard in the meeting, right? Which I'm not privy to. Uh, after what I heard Sheldon Keith say, nice guy. I feel like the players like him. I feel like he's not going to win there. I just don't. And the problem is, if I don't think he could win there, how do I think Dubis can win? Because Dubas, look at the situation in net for the Leafs. It's a disaster. Campbell's a UFA. He's going to get top dollar for at least what he's worth, which could be about, you know, 3.8, 4 million a year. The Leafs don't have that money. They have money wrapped up in Morazic for the next two more years, which, again, I had to question why Kyle Dubas did that for that many years. Like, it was a horrible contract. Yeah, the... Management there, including Dubas, is on a very short leash, I am sure, for the next they, season, next year, which is an impossible me. situation for them. It, it really is. Like, honestly, we could be here next year like Groundhog Day, and the only difference is Shanahan has cleared those two out, or MLSE has cleared all three of them out. Wouldn't be shocked at anything at this point, because their undying belief in what they're doing is not showing up in results. That's That's my take on it. It's a good one. All right, we have one more piece of coaching news on the carousel. Pete DeBoer out in Vegas for the Golden Knights. And so that's another job open that the Flyers have to compete with, but another coach in the carousel to choose from. Yeah, they have one to choose from. Um, he is a pretty good coach. 
I feel like he was scapegoated because of the um, Leonard situation, but Leonard's been hard to deal with. We know that. And honestly, McCrimmon's the problem there, but they're not going to say that because Foley likes him. So they, you know, they get rid of DeBoer. Now they're going to look for another big name. They're going to sign more big free agents. They're going to push down their farm system even further. And in two years, they're going to be a disaster. They will. They are going to eventually. They could be a disaster next season. They could be a disaster next year. I'm going to give them the benefit of doubt and give them one more year with the window. After that, these contracts and everything else that that are aging on this team, not going to look good. I would like the Flyers to interview DeBoer. I think that at least talk to him and see. He's a smart guy. You could learn something. Yes. I I think it would be really good to kind of combine having some veterans there and prospects and know how to integrate them Mm -hmm. in a way. I think that's something he's very good at and he's been able to do in San Jose. He was able to do that in Vegas. And so I think that's a good option for the Flyers. You know, what I put him number one on my list. I don't know. Would I hate it? Probably not. So I just think it's an important interview for them to do. Here's the issue with like, would you put him number one? It's hard to say who you would put at number one, because honestly, you could put Trotz at number one. He's not going to Philly. We all know that. Everybody could wake up at some point and realize you're not getting Barry Trotz. Okay, so you cross him off. Well, now you, you know, you DeBoer is going up against guys like Torts. And and some of the other names that are out there, um, former Dallas Stars, Denver University. Uh, uh, he got fired a few years ago. Uh, I'll come up with it. At any rate, you put him up against some other names, and DeBoer actually rings pretty good. Yeah, I think so as well. All right, we are going to get to your mailbag questions coming up next. But first, we're going to talk about our friends at Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts chain to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders your parts on their computer, choosing only the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers to access rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer from expert mechanics to beginner do-it-yourselfers. They have everything you could need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whatever you need for your car, you'll be able to find it and get it, get your car in shape. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in how did you hear about us box so they know you we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com thanks for making it locked on flyers your first listen every day for your next listen check out the locked on now podcast it's nightly recaps of every nhl game with analysis from all our local experts It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Russ, we have some really good questions today. I am super excited to hear what your answers are to some of them. First one is an interesting one, given all of our talk about the management. Should the Flyers elevate Dean Lombardi's role with the team? I would ask him about it. He may not want that, though. He may have his sights on a particular um, team and a particular job, and maybe that's why he hasn't jumped yet. But I would talk to him. I certainly respect the hell out of Dean Lombardi, and and I'm glad he's in the organization because he's a smart guy. So you have to ask him. I think so, too. I think, you know, we talked on the show on Monday about lessons learned from playoff teams. We talked about the LA Kings, and Dean Lombardi was a huge part of Mm -hmm. the cup runs there so he has the track record and i think that it would do chuck fletcher well to get some more insight in terms of the overall strategy and in putting this team together next year so i would be interested in that i think it's a good question all right next question realistically how much of jbr's salary would have to be retained in a trade and what's your threshold for doing a buyout versus making a deal with that retained salary i mean retained you'd have, you, you'd have to retain half i think that's all you could retain i don't think you can go more than that i would just buy him out honestly 
I would call like two people, and if I get no call back, I'm buying them out. The whole league knows how many goals he scored, and yet most of the people in the league would not want him at that salary. So you're you're really stuck. You either bring him back at that salary and get the same production, the same kind of way, which is the problem. You never get goals when you need them out of JVR. You get them in bunches at times when it's kind of like either you're out of it or you're winning by a lot, but he's not winning a lot of games for you. And and this is why the salary is bad. So, yeah, I'm willing to take half. Could I even get a fifth-round pick for that? I don't think so because everybody's tight on the cap. So I think you're going to have to buy him out. Yeah, I certainly do not want to do what we did with Shane Gostas there in nope. Arizona and have to give up additional assets to get somebody to take him. And the cap hit for a buyout has got to be less than whatever that Yeah, I want to say it's be. something like 1.8 for the next three years yeah. or something. You just deal with that. I think so, too. I think that's the right way to go, unless some crazy opportunity comes up where somebody will take him. But I doubt that will happen, like you said. All right. A couple free agent questions with some recent news. The first one about the Minnesota Wild. Uh, the Wild seem to be parting ways with Kevin Fiala. Should the Flyers go after him? They don't have the money. Where what are you if they the money? could make room? What if they cleared cap space? I mean, Fiala's a nice player, right? What do you have, like 85 points? But yes. How much of that is the Kaprizov factor, too? I really like Fiala, but I don't feel like he's more than a 55-point guy. So we already are worried that they're going to spend big money on Nazem Kadri. I'm not saying that's better to spend it on Kadri than Fiala because Fiala would cost less. I'd prefer to do neither. So in this case, I would not do it. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think if you're going to go for it and you create the cap space, I think there's some other guys that may be out there that would be a better fit right now. Um, but I, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if we got a Kevin Fiala on the team. No, no, he's he's very talented. But I just yeah. feel like if you get Fiala, um, it still doesn't stop you from sort of being soft. It still doesn't make you hard to play against if that's what you want. So you still have... If you have five problems, if you hire Fiala, you've only gotten rid of two of those problems. Fair enough. That's an excellent point. All right, the next free agent, Evgeny Malkin, hinted that his time in Pittsburgh might be coming to an end, and there are rumors he got lowballed in an offer from Ron Hextall. Would signing with the Flyers be the best troll job ever, and would it be good for the Flyers? Well, it'd definitely be the best troll job ever. That's that's <laughs> no question. Um, are you giving three years to Malkin? I can't. It's tough because of his injury history, right? Yeah. But I just think, oh, man, would that not be the greatest like thing to stick it to Ron Hextall? Sure. But you have to look at things long term and say, where's I Malkin going to be after this I year? Because assuming like this year, he, he would be a help. But no. No, no hard I, pass. I just picturing a jersey with Malkin's name on the back, a Flyers jersey with Malkin's name on the back is, I would love it, honestly. I'll tell you what I'm it. envisioning. But... <clears throat> I'm envisioning um, Nicholas Backstrom going on LTIR with this hip injury that's very severe, and he doesn't mm -hmm. know what to expect from it, and them signing Malkin. Interesting. Or, or getting Interesting. Malkin in a trade, I should say, right? Because you'd have to trade him. Well, I think that would be even more interesting honestly, than him coming over to the Flyers. But yeah, how many years does he have left? I, I don't even know. Team yeah, I'm not sure either, year? but the Let's Pens see. are going to have a very interesting offseason. They're in a bit of a, a crunch, and are they going to keep the band together? I know, he is a true UFA, so scratch the, um, the trade part of that and just say, I think he's going to sign with Washington. I wouldn't hate that either as a troll job, honestly. I just want, good. that's what I want out of it is just to send all these longtime pens to other places and have the rest of us enjoy all of that. All right. Is there an existing Flyers player or prospect that has the potential to compete for a top NHL award in the next couple of years? Oh, next couple of years. Yeah, Couturier always in the Selkie. If he's healthy, he's practically in the top five. If he's doing his job, if he plays 75 games, 
He's mm-hmm. a selkie guy. Um, Carter Hart could get in the Vezina conversation for sure. Um, I don't think it would be next year because I don't think the team would be good enough, and I'm not sure it's the year after. But in the next three years, I think, you know, you could be looking at that possibility. Uh, he, You know, he'd be a little older than two, and that's generally when it happens. Beyond that, can't really envision anybody else doing anything else right now. Logically, I agree with you 100% on both of those points. I think my soul would like one of the Flyers rookies to just break out and be in the Calder conversation. He doesn't have to win. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for the moon here. I'm just saying maybe somebody in the top five. It just feels like it's been forever since. Okay, that's fair. You know, I think Shane Goss's bear was maybe the last. Yeah flyers guy that was in the calder conversation and i just want a young dynamic player to be exciting for the team and the fan base i think that would be the best thing well now you basically put all the pressure on bobby brink good job or elliot denoyer you know or denoyer but it's probably we'll brink. See. yeah <laughs> all right we'll get to more of your questions coming up next but first i just received a package of birthday cake puffs from built And I have never had anything this delicious before in a protein bar. They're available right now, and we can't promise they'll be there tomorrow. So go get them today at Built.com. And if you haven't tried the puffs, you really need to get in on this. They're the best protein bar I've ever tasted. Puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yes, that is delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. You can make every day your birthday with Built's Birthday Cake Puffs. Built has taken the delicious experience of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake, covered it in 100% white chocolate, and added sprinkles. It's got 150 calories, but 16 grams of protein and only 9 grams of sugar. This limited time flavor is an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently, provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built.com to get birthday cake puffs now. You can use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, Russ. Our first question in this segment is about the playoffs. Who do you think will win in the round two matchups? Okay. So I will give out. um, I'm going Panthers in seven. Uh, They almost beat Tampa last year. And I think Tampa is not as good this year. And I think there's some other factors. Uh, But I think it's a great series. Maybe the best series. I'm going abs in six. I think St. Louis got by with a lot of injuries. But now with the abs rolling the four lines they do. That, I think, is going to wear on St. Louis's defense. I think the matchups are going to be hard there. I'm going Rangers in six. I know everybody wants to go with the Carolina smothering um, defense, but I still don't know what their goaltending situation is. I don't love Freddie Anderson, so if Freddie Anderson's in there, I'm not going to tell you that season series is over. Um, plus, they had D'Angelo and Brendan Smith, two hotheads who you might be able to get off their game like Boston did. Uh, that could be costly. The Rangers' power play, very good. Sometimes great. And, you know, they do put a lot of pressure in the crease. If it's anti Ranta and he's got to deal with Kreider and, and Zabanajad and, and mostly Panarin in the crease, you know, just shooting a lot of pucks, it's hard. It's hard to hold them back. I think this is a great series. I'm going to go Rangers in six, but I do think it's a great series. And then, believe it or not, I'm going Oilers in seven because Jake Ottinger was fantastic. Oh, don't get me wrong. I And I think the world of him. But he stalled those those the Calgary offense like Kachuk has one goal and Toffoli has one goal and so if for some reason Mike Smith starts off a hot hot which I should slap myself for even saying yeah, it but he, but, he had a couple, say. but he had a couple good games and so he is capable I guess of a couple good games and they get their offense rolling like McDavid's playing at a different level now as much as we dislike Vander Kane he's one of the better players in the playoffs right now you know I, I I'm going to give you a pathway for the Oilers to actually advance. I like what Evan Bouchard has added to them. I'm going to go Oilers in seven because I have to see Calgary start to score. Because the Sutter offense, the Sutter way of playing may have stymied some of their offense. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really interesting series. And it's the one that I'm less certain about. 
the most. I, I think I would say Calgary in seven, just because I think you're right about the McDavid factor and the way the Oilers are playing. But I think that last game for Calgary against Dallas really kicked them into gear. And I'm hoping that carries over for them, but it's going to be a, a tough series. Um, It'll be nuts. I think, It'll be yeah, nuts. I, I think you're spot on with the Avs Blues series. I think it's a four, two, six, you know, six game series for the Avs. I'm going to flip on Panthers lightning. I think it's going to be lightning in seven. And then I also think it's going to be Carolina in seven. I, I just think that the Rangers are going to put up a good fight and it's going to be a similar series to the one against the Penguins. But I think Carolina has the edge here. See, that's why I had Rangers in six. I don't think the Rangers could win a game seven in Carolina. Yeah, that's exactly where I went with that. Yep. All right, next question, a Flyers one. What are you looking for in assistant coaches for the Flyers? It really doesn't matter what I'm looking for in the sense that of names because the coach is going to matter. I just hope, here's what I'm not looking for. I don't want the Flyers to push a name on this new coach and say, hire this guy, or like even if Le Perrier just kind of gets advanced again, well, we have to advance him. You're going to have to live with that. I don't want any of that. I want the new coach to be able to choose everybody. Everybody. And if he wants to bring in a different goalie coach, then so be it too. Like, I just want there this guy to have his mark on things instead of having the team sort of medal in, well, we like these kind these guys, so it's off the table. You can't. Like, they're safe. I don't want any of that. I don't want any of their coaches to be safe. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think they have to have a good structure together. I would also like to see some assistant coaches with a little bit of more of a breadth of experience mm -hmm. in different kinds of situations. I did not like when they had the three head coaches monster before. No, I, I, that was just a failed experiment. So I'm really hoping that maybe they get one of the top AHL coaches in as an assistant coach. I think that'll mm -hmm. be really helpful for the flyers and something like that. So those are kind of a couple things that I'm thinking about on that front. All right. Last question. What are you willing to give up to trade into the second round of the draft? All right. So I'm assuming if I'm going to trade into the second round, I'm going somewhere in the top five to 10 picks. I want in that first half of it when well, it's not half, but close to the first half of it where Guys generally, generally get either overlooked or just the way the boards go. Guys, you know, fall into the second round that maybe shouldn't. Um, I'm going to have to give up like a 20, 22, maybe like a fourth or a fifth and a 2023, 20, like a third round. I'm going to have to give up like that. They're going to have to, they're going to have to scratch away at their little, um, you know, build up of 2023 20, picks to do it. But I, I would do it. I think so too. Um, I do think that, you know, one of the interesting thing is, is that they do have a couple of extra picks in later years. So they can mm -hmm. maybe afford to give one of those extra third rounders up yep. that they have. And so I think that's about right. If you're just giving up picks, I'm really not inclined to give up a prospect. No, I'm not giving up any prospects. So I don't know. I think you're, you're pretty spot on there. All right. Wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing. This is not so fun for me, but I thought it was important to point out that uh, yesterday was the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. And uh, the Flyers' contribution to that was essentially quote tweeting the NHL's little animation that they did and then just adding the hashtag hockey is for everyone which is the most bland. It was literally the least yeah. that the Flyers could do. And it's just so disappointing where they couldn't even do an organic post about it at all. That's and, what you would hope for, like a genuine yeah. post on their own rather than what you just said. Yeah. So do better, Flyers. I expect more from you on these things. And hopefully we will see that moving forward. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We will be back again tomorrow. We're going to talk prospects. Uh, we're going to look at Adam Ingren, who is draft eligible. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send us in your mailbag questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers 
can also email us at lockdownflyers at gmail.com. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You make us your first listen today. Now make your next listen Locked On NHL. From first round matchups to each Stanley Cup final victory, Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday and catch me on the Friday show. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Have a great day.